Okay, okay, okay. It is time, finally, for Streetlight Manifesto. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowend University. I've been excited to get to Streetlight Manifesto. I've heard of the band before, but I have not listened, so this will be my first time. I'm aware of the band because I do and have listened to Less Than Jake and Real Big Fish, but I kind of forgot about this band. I've seen their name before, but I've had the track We Will Fall Together recommended quite a lot here, which is from their third studio album, Somewhere in the Between, <laughs> it's the tongue twister, released in 2007, which was the first record to feature bassist Pete McCullough, who you guys say is a ripper. And I'm really intrigued because this is an eight-piece band, according to Wikipedia, two saxophones, a trumpet, a trombone. Yes, I'm going to love this already. But reading a bit about the band, this was an interesting tidbit I thought worth sharing. Vocalist Thomas Kalnoki writes the band's songs on an acoustic guitar and then fleshes out the song structure on the computer, hums horn lines, after which the rest of the band come in and later add their parts. He has cited the soundtrack of the film Stand By Me, great movie, as his biggest musical influence and stated that he looks to the 1950s and 1960s for inspiration when writing. Without further ado, let's get into it. We Will Fall Together by Streetlight Manifesto. Oh yeah. Yes! Holy moly. I'm going to just start over. I've got nothing to say. That just sounded like a movie soundtrack out of the gate. Again, I've listened to Less Than Jake before. I'm familiar with how the horns fit into that sound, but this was this is really horn heavy out of the gate. I just feel like a kid in a candy store hearing that. Ooh, that triplet thing? Wow. Whoa! Oh man. Wow! Wow. I was you a guy obsessed with the afterlife. Oh, what a terrible day that was. You realize wow. he all his time picking by and he been left. They've gone through a couple different genres already. You know what's funny? The song started out, it oddly had that kind of epic like CBS, like sports theme. If you know that one, if you watch football here in America, it, it really had that kind of cadence, da 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 like the really just, just syncopated horn melodies. And now we're in this kind of like salsa feel. And it just makes me feel so good. You know, again, not going back to Less Than Jake over and over, I'm not going to keep saying that, but that's my real only exposure to horns and rock music in this way. And this is so upfront horn dominant already. And I grew up playing in wind ensemble. I play trumpet, which is why I like the horns and rock music. You know, I love Chicago just for that reason. I grew up on that band. And this is such a modern kind of take on that, obviously more in the ska punk thing. And it adds such a different dimension to the songs. You know, there's so much possibility when you have a vocalist already. And then you can have horns with these like counterpoint other melodies going on that are just as lyrical as the vocalist. So now the vocals are coming in. I want to let it play and kind of see where this goes because that first minute really rocked my socks. I mean, it just, there's so much to listen to. And I mean, I haven't even gotten to the bass part yet. Just a great walking bass line. It's mixed very well. I want to say he's a finger player based on the tone I'm hearing. I didn't read that far, 
But nonetheless, the bass is very present. It's just got that walking thing, which I'll get to in a moment because that's a huge part of what I do here is talk about the bass player. But let me go back to when this kind of verse one starts. But man, I'm excited. This is just right up my alley. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. Okay, real quick, I want to establish where we're at. B. Okay. It's a samba. I love those just runs down he goes just doom, boom 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 doom, doom, doom. it's just like really bringing the piece somewhere else and they went out of that samba verse just right into more of that faster punk thing with the driving bass it's just a signature sound that I'm not super familiar with but again I never heard this sound until I listened to Less Than Jake and this is like that on steroids I mean this is like a whole different involvement of an ensemble of that size uh, kind of has that um, harmonic minor thing going on, so we're kind of around B minor. I mean, that first groove was just a straight-up samba. And we kind of had that G. Then he goes to the, the five with the raised raised third, which goes back to that B minor. Very cool. A lot of tension and resolve. That's cool. Going back to that kind of samba feel, but now the bass is kind of widening those chords. You know, this seems like a very cool video. There's so much going on musically, I can't even like look at it because I'm afraid I'm going to miss something. And I haven't done a music video in a while, but this seems just very appropriate, cute looking video. I'll try to keep my eye on it, but... different change here. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. Wow. I think the reason I like this as much as I do is that it stimulates me intellectually. That's a weird way to put it. The same way progressive music did when I stumbled upon that. You know, you listen to a prog rock song. And sometimes I'm just in the mood to like open a door and go into a new room and hear a song with a ton of nuances and layers, you know, stuff you're just not going to hear on a first listen. And you listen to it 15, 20 times and all of a sudden you get it because you're finally hearing and seeing the big picture, but you might not get it on the first listen. And sometimes I'm in the mood for that. This is the same thing, albeit not progressive rock necessarily. I mean, you could argue the definition of progressive in any genre. But what I'm saying is that there's so much going on that I have to go back and listen again to catch what I missed the first time. And you know, sometimes I'm in the mood for just a great simple song, one, four, five progression, whatever. Those songs are great. I love those too. But sometimes I like just taking a song with as much nuance as this has and just wrapping it around me like a blanket and just absorbing in the layers. And it's almost like I need to listen to these songs twice before these videos, but this is so much fun picking these th things up on the first listen. 
And I just love the contrapuntal nature the horns add around those vocals because it's almost like having two or three other vocalists that are just behaving like instruments in the composition. You know, you come out of these verses with a great kind of catchy vocal melody, then it goes into this horn thing with its own melody. I mean, the dimension it adds to the piece is just something else. And they're just pivoting almost just a 90 degree turn into a different genre. Now it kind of sounds more like hard rock here and that guitar break happened. It's so fast. It's so cool. It's just like every note he picks is perfect. Just gluing all this stuff together. That little bit there is like it went, it goes from this, like the salsa feel. I mean, that sounds like salsa, like really well done, more of like a hard rock salsa. I, I like it. Even in the same phrase, they went from that salsa feel straight into like a ah, kind of like harder punk feel, just in the same phrase. Listen to that. It's like an A B thing, but they're A Bing genres to me. It's amazing how smoothly they can transition in and out of those. I mean, it's like a genre jump, really. Listen to this. That's so cool. Hey, B. That's a cool variation on the groove there. He's going. Let's see. No, that's major. So he's going. A, B. But the A is kind of the simplistic. And then on that B phrase going up to the D. So kind of doing some little nice little pentatonic fills there. I mean, it's going by so fast. It's a futile effort for me to sit here and try to catch what he's doing. I kind of hear the general scales he's going up. It's really been holistically around B minor, A, G, goes up to the D major. So I'm going to just call it like we're in D major. So he's going from the six down to the four, five, back to the one. And then that F sharp gets put in every now and then, uh, which is normally a minor key in D major. Actually, that's confusing. Let's just call it in a minor. I love when they go to that major five the F sharp major, because that third resolves nicely to the B minor. B flat to the B. And that's a classic thing. That's not anything off the wall chord wise, but the way the horns are kind of driving that tension, you know, over here on the right, sounds like the horns, some of them are panned a little right. It's giving it just a nice, nice loop of progression. That's very catchy. I mean, I, I've talked a lot already. I don't know if I'm catching everything. There's so many layers. There it is. F sharp major. Yeah, back to this thing. I haven't watched the video. I can't. Ooh. Nothing like a catchy saxophone phrasing. You know, it's hard for Fred instrument players to kind of think in those phrasings, but that's one of the biggest things I tried to latch on to because I started playing trumpet 
about 20 years ago. I still play. And when I was learning bass, <clears throat> I made it a point to try to learn horn lines on bass because the phrasings, the whole approach is completely different. And it kind of gets you out of the box of the normal pentatonic shapes on bass, on the fretboard, and it gets you to think differently. And I think I, I, I really value that experience I had learning horn because you know, you're not looking at anything when playing horn. It's all in your mind. You're having to think of, there's no like visual component like there is piano or the fretboard to kind of look down and see patterns kind of forming before you play them. When you improvise, you have to think about everything very theoretically. And the natural, you know, the natural tropes and licks you do as a horn player are really weird to play on a fretboard. So that whole thing is kind of fascinating because that's a phrasing I heard in the saxophone right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that might be a, a lick you could do on guitar, but I, I kind of wouldn't go there. Just the way he's kind of repeating the notes. I'm talking about this little phrase right here. little bass break. It's like a metal riff now. Dig it again, dig it again, dig it again. That's cool. I haven't heard that flavor in here yet. Man, they've thrown it all in in this five minute song. Kind of it's like a, they're just going back to that B note in between all those notes. Let's hear it. Cool little riff. Ooh, I love that guitar tone. Kind of return to what he did in the intro there. Man, I'm going to say I've never been, obviously, to a ska show. It, You know, I remember a long time ago listening to the few Less Than Jake songs I had. I was like, this would be fun to see live. And, you know, 15 years go by, I didn't never really caught them. But I can't imagine the live show experience for a band like this. I mean, I, I can't even... It's got to be the most freaking fun thing you could do. I mean, there's just... I mean, a big band like that, just there's an innate energy just having that many people on stage when they're this tight. And I'm sure they are. They, they, I mean, you could just tell they're incredible musicians. But, you know, that's one of my favorite things about playing horn. I still play horn live today, occasionally with a wedding band. That's an energy you add on stage with horns that just augments the whole song. And that's such a cornerstone of what they're doing here. I just can't, I mean, I just want to see a band like this live. And I want to go back and hear this last phrase, and I'll kind of give you my thoughts. And you know, we're almost at the end of the song. My voice is kind of breaking up. I posted I was dealing with COVID. Uh, I've taken every over-the-counter drug in my house. <clears throat> and for a second, for a second, listening to this song, I forgot I was feeling like shit. I mean, the power of music's amazing. This has really made my day. But let's go ahead and hear this whole thing play out. Let me give it the last 30 seconds or so. Wait, wait. That's so catchy. Back to the intro. This was an exceptional treat. 
to listen to. I had a feeling going into it, it was going to be really on my alley. <clears throat> and of course, all the punk songs I've done here in this, this mini series within a series, I've liked them all for various reasons. And that's, that's kind of been my goal is to have an open mind with all of these requests into a new genre I haven't heard. And I can tell you something I like about each one, but this ticks a lot of those boxes. I mean, I'm just a sucker for horns, as I've said, but this was truly a progressive piece. I mean, three, four, five genres thrown in, and somehow that horn section made it all feel at home. And I feel like I didn't even talk about the bass player enough. I mean, switching tempos and feels on a dime and it not sounding stark, it's just amazing compositional skills. I mean, that, that whole thing was a true ride. And as I said, I think when I listen to this again, I'm going to hear things I didn't hear before. There's a lot going on, and there's something about that overwhelming chaos of the composition where you kind of, you know, you finish the song and go, what? I need to go back again. That, that's how songs become amazing. You just want to keep hearing them because you either hear something new you didn't before, and that journey is just one of the most amazing things about music. That's all I've got. I mean, I got to listen again. This was such a treat. Thank you guys for recommending this. Let me know what else you should check out. I'm always reading your requests and comments. I've got a big list going. So if you haven't seen the song you've requested, stay tuned. It is probably on the list. I love you all. Thanks for bearing with me. And again, for a quick moment, I forgot I was sick, but I had to do this video. It, it was the highlight of my day. And thanks for hanging out with me. I love you all. Cheers. Like and subscribe. <laughs> and we'll see you next time.